uh, kind of feels like a lot right now. Definitely feels like a lot. And I know what you're thinking. No, this is not cookie dough. It's protein cookie dough, which is what makes it healthy. So I don't know about you, but I have found that I've been having a much harder time focusing lately. That elusive flow state just is not coming as easily or as frequently. And it makes a lot of sense why that might be. So that I could better figure out what I needed to change in order to zone in and get focused again, I worked through this process. Maybe you could call it a launch list for focus. Step-by-step -step things that I could do that would help create the environment for focus, get me mentally prepared, and actually create the conditions that I would need to get in there and get into that flow state. We often will not take the time to adequately prepare to actually set ourselves up for success and instead just kind of keep rushing through and bouncing back and forth between different things. It's sort of one of those, if you don't have time to meditate for one hour, you need to meditate for two parables where you actually need to slow down in order to go faster. So with that in mind, this is the process. The first thing is just breathe. Seriously, take a moment to just step back, even if it's five or 10 seconds, just take a deep breath and just let it go. Give that CO2 to your local houseplant because they need it more than you do. Grab your favorite pen, take your notebook and open it to a blank page. The next bit is simply about clearing space. The first thing is clearing your physical workspace. So any visual distractions, different things that are cluttering your desk, get rid of them. Even if you have to put them in a drawer or something like that, just get it out of your visual space. If you have any post-it notes or random scribblings of different things that you might need to do later, simply make a note of it in your new notebook page. You don't have to write exactly what the note is, but just that the note exists and where it is so that you can reference it later. You're just clearing visual space and compiling things so you don't forget anything. Then move on to your digital space. This is mostly relevant if you're working on a computer, but when we tend to get into that bouncy, overwhelmed situation where we can't focus on any one thing, a lot of things tend to be open. Go in and clear all of that out. Close everything. Even this stuff you're probably going to be working on in a minute. You should have a completely fresh canvas to work from. In a very similar way, continue to compile that list in your notebook if there's anything that you don't want to forget. The last thing in this category is clearing your brain space. You should already have a little bit of a list going at least from your digital clearing and your physical space clearing. All you need to do is just put the rest of the things that might be pinging your mind, just reminding you about little things you need to do. Have I walked the dog yet? Have I done this or that? Just write it all down so that it lets your brain relax. It's just like a computer where if you have a lot of software running, you're going to be using more processing power than you need to be using. When you clear that out, you have more to give to the one task you really want to focus on. I'm not a neuroscientist, but I imagine your brain works the exact same way. So at this point, you should have a clear desk, an open notebook with a list of all the things you had going on and all the little things you needed to do or were just worried about. Now it's time to sort through that list. Just look through and look for two different things. One is a quick win, something that you can just knock out, take care of that might not take that much mental energy. The second thing is the most important task you need to do today. It might not be the only one, but we're just going to pick one for now. If it's a term paper that's due in a couple hours, that's gonna be the thing that you're gonna pick. If I'm still counting correctly, this should be number seven, which is the momentum play. You're going to go do that quick win thing right now. It should be small, it should be pretty straightforward, and this is all about building some momentum with a victory. If you were worried about walking the dog or needing to take the dog out or something like that, go do that thing and then use that time to mentally process what you're going to need for the bigger, more important task. You're accomplishing two things at the same time with this. 
One, you're building momentum by finishing something and actually completing something on your list. And at the same time, you're going to get the wheels turning on your bigger task. Start thinking about what you'll need for it, some of the ideas on how to start, or what might be a good way to get going with it. That way, when you sit down, you'll already have some things flowing and you won't be starting from a completely clean slate. And then affirm your success. As silly as it feels, you should celebrate doing whatever it was that your quick win was. Dance or go boom, whatever it is. Don't scare your dog too much if you yell boom, but whatever it is, do what you need to do to just affirm, like center yourself around that momentum. It's really important. At this point, we are almost there. Step nine is to set the stage. What you're going to do is open up the one program you need in order to do the thing that you're going to do, whatever the bigger project, the more important thing is, maybe the two things, but you're not going to open anything else. You're also going to set the stage by going to the bathroom, getting a glass of water to bring to your desk with you, different things like that. Perhaps it's letting any humans or animals that you cohabitate with know that you're going to be focusing for a 90 minute block and that unless something is on fire, it's probably best to not interrupt you because you really need to get this work done. When you're ready to sit down, flip to a new page in your notebook, put the one thing you're gonna be focusing on written right at the top of that page, and then note any of the things that you thought of while you were doing your quick win. Any notes or requirements or ideas, like if you're writing a newsletter, who is going to be receiving that newsletter? What are some things that you'd like to include? Just short little notes to get things going. Number 10 is do the thing. Set a timer for 90 minutes. That's at least the amount of time that we use in the Break the Twitch member community when we get together to do our focus sessions. I find that 90 minutes is enough time to get into a deep focused state, but not so long that you're trying to do multiple involved tasks where you're going back and forth. But there's two more really important things with this. Number 11 is dump distractions. I can personally guarantee that you will think of the funniest tweet you have ever twote the second you start getting into a focused zone. You will absolutely feel the need to tweet that joke or whatever it was that you came up with the moment you think of it. You may not. Take that idea, pick up your pen, write it at the bottom of your open notebook. Just let it out of your brain Know that it's gonna be there when you're done. Do not open Twitter or any other applications. Just let it go into this notebook. Let it live in there. It'll still be there for you when you're ready. As you start warming up and as you boot up, fewer and fewer of those things will happen. You'll get more focused, even though it's uncomfortable getting there. It will just start to flow. You just need to push through those initial things, which is why Exporting the ideas to a notebook is really important. And really, that's it. Number 12 is just repeat. If you don't happen to finish what you started in that first 90 minute block, you can take a short break, celebrate the fact that you completed a 90 minute focus block, and then go right back in. Continue that momentum. Each time you go back, will be a little bit easier to get back into the flow of it and continue on up until a certain point where you reach that mental fatigue part of the day, which might just be all the time if you're in the middle of a pandemic, but that's okay. As you're listening through hearing me explain this, I know it might feel like a lot, but I promise that this is very much one of those sharpen the ax before chopping the tree scenarios. If it would be helpful for you to see this all written out and summarized, I have all of that on the Break the Twitch website. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video, but for now, thank you so much for your attention. Hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.